and welcome to the Sock Witchery Podcast. My name is Lindsay and I'm coming to you from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where I live with my husband Colin and her cat Gigi. Sorry, I'm laughing because she Gigi was sleeping and now she's awake and she likes to bug Colin while he's working. So if we hear yelling, that's what that is. It's him telling her to because she sits and paws at his legs while she's while he's trying to work. It's kind of funny because Colin has a standing desk. Anyway, today's episode is all about sweaters. Also, if you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Okay, so this is episode 10.5. The episode I did about two weeks ago now was all about socks. And today's going to be all about sweaters. So I have one FO. So I was supposed to record this on Monday and I was desperately trying to get a sweater done for this episode and I thought I could get it done over the weekend and then I lost steam on it. You might see why but wait it'll yeah you'll see. So yeah one FO and several sweater whips to talk about. Uh, there won't be any acquisitions because most of my acquisitions are sock yarn related so that will be on the next sock episode which I'm shooting for the second week of August to record. I'm hoping to kind of get into a routine of twice a month like the second and last weeks of the month to record. So it'll just alternate between socks and sweaters because I don't know, that just seems to work. Who knows if it'll stay that way, but for now, that's what we're gonna do. I'd like to point out that today, cause you can't really see it cause I'm, it's not in frame, but I'm wearing my Goblin Brain shirt from Penny Moons, uh, who's Megan of the Fibromancer podcast. It is part of her Halfway to Haunts make along. It is in her spreadsheet shop. So I will link that down below so you can go check out her stuff as well. Uh, she has this one and then her Stay Spooky one, which I'm going to order closer to the holiday itself or fall, basically. Okay, let's talk sweaters. So I finally finished my Sovin sweater. I don't know if that's how you say it because I've heard uh, Sierra of Tink and Bobble says it differently for me and I don't know who's right. It doesn't really matter because it's done. Are you ready? It's so good. Yay! I'm not wearing it because it's a million degrees here, but yay! I cannot. Okay, so story time. The front of the sweater, which is right here, nearly killed me. <laughs> not really. I'm being overdramatic. But I had to, I was literally this close to being done with the front and my stitch counts were off. So it wasn't a big deal. I think it was like a stitch difference, but I was worried it was going to offset the neck. So I ripped out all the way back to like the beginning of the arm, not beginning of the armhole shaping, but like ripped out seven inches worth of work to fix it. And so like I finished it and I sent a picture, I sent pictures of the pieces laying on the floor to a bunch of people. And I'm like, sorry, there's a cat here stuck in here. I hate this thing. I never want to knit a pea sweater again. This is awful. It's, I, I go, I don't know if you do this, but I go through phases where I um, get really irritated at the project I'm working on. It's usually right before the end. And then, you know, I block it or do whatever I need to do. And then, or weave all the ends in and then I love it. But yeah, I was at that stage. So then I blocked all the pieces and seamed it together. So I've done seam sweaters before. I have like four, I think I've seamed in my lifetime. And I use those little plastic locking stitch markers and I basically pin down every inch, inch and a half. And on this sweater, it was super easy because, oh, I'm sorry, this is Savin by Megan Babin. I will link it down below, obviously. Um, when you see, when you do the knitting, you have this selvage kind of edge. You've got this slip stitch and then there's a garter selvage edge. And oh my gosh, you guys, the seaming was so easy. You literally just match bump to bump to bump to bump. It's not like mattress stitch where like if it starts going a weird angle, you have to figure out what's going on. So easy. I finished the seaming. I started at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. I think we, no, we didn't go to the gym. We went to the grocery store. And then I came home and finished it. I was done by noon. And I'm like, oh, it's all seamed together. And in case you knit this or knit piece sweaters. So when you finish seaming, I dried my hair today, you guys, big deal. Um, the neck was like to here, like it was huge. But when you pick it up, which I was gonna be like, oh, I'm just gonna do it on Sunday. No, I finished this on that Saturday. This, this part took a long time. So you pick up and it immediately like cinches everything up. 
This is a folded over neckband, so I knit two and a half inches, maybe just shy of two and a half inches, and then I just whip stitched it down. I am not great at folded over collars because I get frustrated, so I literally put my AirPods in and listen to like the same song over and over again and just went knit to knit, purl to purl, knit to knit, purl, the whole time, and it's done, and it's lovely. So it's been blocked. It's all good. I love it so much. You will see that I loved it so much that I cast on another one of Megan Babin's sweater patterns, which you will see here when I start going through my sweater whips. So that's my FO. I'm hoping to wear it to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Weather Be Darned, because I won't be there for that long, but we'll see. I mean, I did wear, wore a fingering weight and mohair sweater to Rhinebeck last year, and Rhinebeck last year, I think it got up to like 78 or something. It was awful. But for knitwear, I will suffer. Oh my gosh, you guys. And it's, it, I should have said this, it fits so well. It's oversized like I wanted. I did the 50 inch, which is the size five. I think it was 50. It might have been 51. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. Again, if you knit this pattern, I have to point something out. I think I talked about this when it was in construction, but the sleeves, so you start on the cuff, they end, I'm not joking, here at the neck. So what you do, I'm not really giving anything away. This is just, you know, construction. It's a saddle shoulder. It's a raglan and a saddle. So this section right here is actually sleeve and then you connect the front and back to it. So it makes like the shoulder. It's really great. So if you knit this, don't panic when your sleeves are, I think mine were like 27 inches long. Cause it was like, I think it was like 18 and it, they're very long. So don't freak out. That's how they're supposed to be. Yeah. Seven out of Wool of the Andes Ice School Heather. Yay. Starting this in December of 2021. Finished it about a week and a half ago. Yay. Okay, next up. Also, I will have all of these linked below with as much yarn info as I can give. This next one, I'm not gonna give you all the yarn info. It's on my Ravelry page. All the links below will go to Ravelry. If you need the link from somewhere else, uh, leave a comment and I will try and get you a link that is not for Ravelry. Um, I know with Savin and Cord, which I'm going to show you, they're both on Hudson and West website. I believe Thea Coleman has her own website. I have like six Andrea Maury sweaters to show you. She has her own website. I will, if I think of it, put that down below in the show notes. Okay, so next up, that was almost a whip, but not quite. In fact, I finished the last sleeve cuff this morning and I still have to do the body. Is my stripes pullover? You have not seen this. <laughs> Because I cast this on originally for the March to March DRK March to May knit along. And as I talked about earlier, school year did not go great, so I didn't get this done. But here we go. So I've got the yoke all done. I'm a substantial way into the body, and both sleeves are finished. This is out of Wool of the Andes Sport Weight in several blue shades. I can tell you most of them, I think. Wonderland, Heather, I can't remember what this one is. I think this is Atlantic Heather, Baltic Heather, because I actually have this in a sweater quantity. Winter Night and Midnight Heather. This is the only one. Sapphire Heather. This one's Sapphire Heather. So um, the reason I did the sleeves, not because I was, I don't really care about like doing sleeves with a body attached. It was because, so I'm pretty much at the length of the normal like the not cropped, but the, the long version. And it's still not gonna be long enough for me. It's I think 13 inches from hem to underarm and I'm more comfortable with a 15 inch. I like a little length, just not like it doesn't have to like cover my butt or anything. Just like, I don't wanna be pulling it down like this all the time. So um, I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn to make it a little longer. And I do, I am gonna weigh these after I do the next round of stripes. Cause if I can get the, so my ribbings are, ribbing for here is in Wonderland Heather, and I ended on Sapphire Heather on my sleeves. So I'm hoping to do this again. So I'm here in the body, which means I need to do a whole stripe sequence again, and then end with these two. So fingers crossed I have enough to end it in that, that way. If not, big deal, I'll, I'll finish it, but I'll be able to make it longer than I want or than the pattern for calls for, which will make me happy. This is living in a Fates Thread Studio Ghibli bag that I love very much because every time I look at it, I find something new. Yeah. 
So this is her, this is actually a pretty old bag. It's a large sweater bag. I don't know if she's like reformulated them or not. I only have, I think I only have this one from her that's this size. I normally just get sock bags. Okay, sorry, that's on a size five Chowgu red lace. Pattern will be linked down below. This will be done by the next sweater episode because it just will be. My sock mojo kicked back in, of course, while I was trying to work on sweaters. So uh, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm checking my notes because I have all the pegs set over to the side in the order of which I need to talk about them or they're listed in the notes. All right, next, Andrea Maori. Like I said, I have like four, five, I think I said six. I like to over-exaggerate. Uh, you have seen the yarn for this, but you have not seen this in it up. So I talked about it in my podcast back in February. I'm in the middle of a row. Of course I am. I talked about, I had purchased yarn for the Straya cardigan. Oh, I'm not even at the, I thought, I'm like, oh, I'm at the end. No, I'm in the middle. Or I'm at the very beginning of the round, and it's the right side. So this is the Straya cardigan. If you watch Tink and Bobble or Plies and Hellhounds, they have both, Gabby's is done. And Sierra's way further than me. But here is the Straya cardigan. I am doing this in Knit Picks palette. This marble gray, or marled gray. And then again, uh, blues and gray. So I have na navy. I have a navy, a black, charcoal, char the, it's black, dark. <laughs> the darkest one is black, then charcoal. Then I believe Midnight Heather again, and then navy blue. So it's going to be great. I am not far at all. I think I'm doing the size six of this too. The five or the six, but it's, I love it, but it just, it takes a while. That's just how it is. I am doing the, yep, size six. So I'm doing a size bigger than I normally would. So it's taking a lot longer. So yeah, sleeves are, I am proud of myself because everything that's top down is at sleeve splits. So split for the sleeves here, here are all my ends. Wee. Oh, you want to talk about ends? That stripe sweater is gonna be, I'm just gonna put on a podcast and just go. I also bought buttons. Buttons help motivate me to get stuff done because like I have the buttons. I actually ordered these from the UK, but they are, um, fake horn buttons. I wanted imitation horn because I didn't want to worry about like washing it and having stuff happen to them. Also, horn buttons are very expensive. So I have a bunch, so I'll have enough for another sweater as well. That's my Straya Cardigan by Andrea Maori. Uh, I, I have grand illusions of finishing in August. It won't happen, but maybe. Maybe by Christmas, we'll see. I'd like it to be on the needles for less than a year and I cast on in March. Again, that was for the March to May. And yeah, no, didn't get that done. This is living in a NSP Designs bag. She is no longer a bag maker, but this was one of my first ones. It's cats and donuts. I have a lot of things with donuts on them. It's fine. Although I'm finding as I get older, I like donuts less and less. I don't know what, but okay. So that's Straya. Next up is literally a tiny project, but I'll show it to you anyway. This is living in my Main Street Electrical Parade bag from Georgian of Stitching Plaza which I think I talked about showing and I didn't show it. I talked about it in the sock episode, but yeah, there you go. This is the Birch Pullover by Andrea Maury. Oh yeah, I'm also putting pictures in on one of these two sides. Pretend what I do when I'm editing. <laughs> this is nothing. This is literally a collar. But the Birch Pullover is essentially the same thing as the Straya cardigan, but it's a pullover instead. Doesn't this look itsy bitsy? It'll block bigger. It's on. I have this on my Chowgu shorties. So these are my, th uh, hmm, are these two and a half inch tips. I have them on the bigger tips and then the cable. But yeah, it's tiny. But I did a tubular cast on. Yay, two by two tubular cast on too. This is again out of Palette from Knit Picks. This is in the Shire Heather. If you recall my Chalet Days sweater by Samantha Guerin, I did that in the Wool of the Andes of this color. Yeah, I like this color a lot. So. Very slow going. Like I said, it is just a collar. Some of these like stripes I need to get done. Straya I need to get done. This is kind of a back burner one, but I ordered the yarn ring that picks a summer sale and I just, yeah. So Straya, not Straya, Birch. Tiny beginnings of a Birch. Next up is again, another, this is my last Andrea Mowry pattern. So yes, I have four total. Uh, is my Gib sweater by Andrea Mowry. 
Ta -da. Again, pass the sleeve split. Oh, I love this. This is out of Fjord Heather Wool of the Andes. I am past the sleeves. They're on my sleeves are on my barber cords. Oh, that's the back. Here's the front. I have a glitter bomb progress keeper from Three by the Sea Designs. It's got light blue stars in it. I'm actually doing these on um I believe it's Knitter's Pride. It, I'm doing them on smart sticks, which have actually been very useful, and I like them. The cord's not bad. Um, I, I have a lot of Knit Picks needles. Not Knit Picks. Knitter's Pride. I have a lot of Knitter's Pride needles because my first uh, interchangeable set was uh, the Dreams. So their cord doesn't totally bother me if I'm doing a sweater and not magic looping because it doesn't super matter and their joins are pretty okay. Yeah. It looks really tiny. I'm doing the size 5. That's usually my go-to for Andrew Maori patterns. Um, but this texture pulls in quite a bit. So, yeah. I hope this, I think with a good solid weekend of this, I could get this done. This one, I'm in, it's in the round, so it's, I'm not in the middle of a row. But I really like the cables on the raglan. They were super easy. This is a great easy sweater. It actually helped me quite a bit because I'm not super experienced with, um, incorporating a pattern into increases. So like on the Savin, the sleeve increases, you're in a field of reverse saconette, so you just make one purl. There's nothing to really worry about because you're just adding on like the same stitch. But this one, and then one of the other ones I'm gonna show you, um, you have to incorporate into pattern, into the pattern. And that this was actually very helpful for that. So this is living in a thousand ravens bag that I got at Stitches. Midwest in 2017, <laughs> which is the last time I went to Stitches. Stitches doesn't exist anymore, right? Is it Stitches that doesn't exist or is it the, I don't know, anyway, Stitches might exist still. I can't remember. I just haven't gone in a long time. Yay. It's, oh, it's a Disney bag. It's like vintage Disney posters. You're literally seeing almost all of my sweater bags in this round as well. That's Gib by Andrew Mario. There are actually two versions of that pattern. There's like a men's one, which is Gib 2, and this is Gib 1. To my understanding, they're essentially the same pattern, but I think the men's one has an upper range for chest circumference. I don't know. It might be a little longer. I don't know. I just went with the women's one. I'm going to lengthen it anyway, because that's what I do. All right. Let me pull these a little closer. Okay. Next up is Felix. So I've done a Felix. I have a beautiful icy blue uh let low be felix but i never wear it i should wear it more problem is my schools are too warm and then i don't get to wear my icelandic sweaters and it makes me sad so this is living in another nsp designs bag it's a christmas bag and i am doing this out of jameson this is jameson of shetland not jameson and smith aaron weight yarn this is the colorway moss so I've mentioned it before, I believe. My mom owns a yarn shop in our home, in my hometown of Janesville, Wisconsin, but she is in the process of retiring. So the shop is for sale, and she's kind of like cool with liquidating some stuff out of it. So uh, she's had this, she's had a ton of Jameson, of Shetland sweater or Aaron sweater quantity, like weight, brain. She's had a ton of. Uh, just it, it just sitting around and no one's really been into it so she's gave it all to me so now i'm knitting a felix out of it i'm done with the sleeves if you're not familiar with felix it is by amy christoffers it has this really cool i like especially in this one it kind of reminds me of pine trees it has this lace detail on the raglan top down i did an alternating cable cast on which the lovely samantha garen had required of me in a couple of her patterns and I really love it so I use it in place of a tubular cast on when I don't feel like doing it. It's nice and stretchy and it looks really cool because it does, it essentially does the same thing as a tubular but it's not as labor intensive. It kind of is but it isn't. So yeah, um, I am going to lengthen this so my plan is to knit the sleeves and then see how much body I have, yarn I have left and then um, I might do a split hem depending on how long I make it. I like sweatshirty size sweaters in case you can't tell. I'm not real big on the negative ease. And that's okay. That's the beauty of knitwear that you knit yourself. You can do what you want. So that's, do you like this? That's Felix. Next up 
is my Cottage Cardigans by Jacqueline C. Slack. You have seen this. We call this my Jester Cardigan. I am past the sleeves. Oh, it's my Jester Cardigan because I knit this a lot of this while watching Critical Role uh, Campaign 2. So this is out... Oh, I'm, you're looking at the wrong side. This is out of um, Vintage uh, Neighborhood Fiber Co. Studio Sock. Because uh, it's super wash and they don't carry it anymore. I think I had a little bit of a pooling issue with my yarn colors. I don't know. Like this is really, this is a lot darker. And if you look at one of my button bands, you can see like a definite like change. But it almost depends on the light. It's so weird. Anyway, this is the, yeah, you can see it like right here. You can see like I have a big chunk of dark and light. But all the skeins are from the same family like I got them all at the same time I I don't know <laughs> anyway uh the beauty of this cardigan is that a built-in button band built-in button band you start with the neck band and then pick up and stuff and it only takes for my size which I am doing I believe a four I'm doing the four in uh I believe the four is 50 inch I'm checking the pattern that's why I'm head bent yeah, 50 inch circumference. Uh, I think it calls for six to 10 inches. So a 50 would be six for me. Yeah. Here's my cinnamon roll from Tiddly Bakes. That's marking off uh, where I split for the sleeves. Again, I have split for sleeves on my pink knitting barber cords that I got from the Crazy Sock Lady. And yeah, I'm just really happy with this. I need to sit down and work on this mindlessly knit because it's just back and forth. I do have to pay attention to the, to the neck band. But overall, it's just boring, not boring, mindless back and forth. And then we talked about the buttons. I got these sparkly silver buttons because it is my Jester cardigan. Yeah. And then also living in the same bag is the gray version. I have two, I have plans for two gray versions. I am so not far. I think I, was, I may be a couple rows further than I was last time I talked about it. But yeah, I'm kind of waiting for the blue one to be done and then I'll work on this. But they are very delightful to work on and I highly recommend it even though I'm not even done with it. I need more cardigans in my school wardrobe or just life wardrobe. So that's where this came from. <laughs> I have three cardigans. Woohoo. Um, I do have plans for a uh, Thea Coleman cardigan, but those are on the back burner for right now. So again, NSP Designs bag. It's uh, dictionary definitions, like vintage dictionary definitions and it's lovely it has a pink zipper and it's pink on the inside mm. I like this bag I like all the bags I have from her I wish I miss her bags a little bit a lot of it okay and now we've got the two heavy hitters so first up we will talk about cord so like I said I finished seven immediately cast on cord so I bought the yarn for this I don't know when I remember when I bought the yarn for this it might have been the end of school year I'm sure as I started around the finish line on Sabin, I bought this. So this is the Rooibos Heather Wool of the Andes Worsted. The original sweater of this, which I, again, I'll pop a picture in, is done in a very similar color. And as much as I love a Hudson and West Forge sweater, the bus circumference that I knit to, especially on this one, not a price point I can afford on, afford on a whim. I'd have to, like, save for that. One day. One day. But not right now. Not when I've got the yarn buying I have. So I started the sleep. Oh, I'm going to do the size six on this one, which is a full 10 inches of positive ease. Because as you'll see in the picture I put up, uh, it's a, well, I'll put up, maybe I'll put up two. It's a men, it's, they're both men. This, I can't, my brain, I'm so sorry. My, the Savin and Cord and Porter, which is a cardigan that I want to knit by Megan Babin as well. They're all menswear inspired and measured. So, um, they're, they're unisex, which is nice, but I'm doing a giant one. So here's my sleeve. All that to say, I'm doing a giant one. Um, I will say that when I finished Savin, I did say if I ever have to knit one of those cable patterns again, it'll be too soon, which I don't truly mean, but I struggled with those cables. I would get into autopilot and screw up charts and stuff. This one has one chart <laughs> and it's gorgeous. It's got this really cool slip stitch. It's got a tubular cast on ah <laughs> and yeah i'm just i love this i love this color i'm very excited about it once stripes is done i'm gonna go kind of hard on this and then the next one so this is living in the same bag my sobbin lived in which is my 
rainbow flannel, Hannah Lou designs bag with a yellow canvas bottom. I love this bag. And you can hear all my needles living in there. I have both sets of chow goose. I have, I have, oh, these are in here too. <laughs> my box of things because um, you, I'm marking off the cable repeats in the sleeve as I add new ones in. So yeah, what was I saying? I have chow goo interchangeables. I have most of the sets, so there's always things clanking around in here. Yeah, there's that. And last but not least, living in my Stitching the High Notes Bees and Lavender bag. I cannot say enough about Joanna's sweater bags. This is the only one I have. I have a couple of, um, sorry, there's a string on it. I have a couple of sock bags from her or like smaller bags, but this baby rules. I've never had one that's like long, like this way long as opposed to this way long. And I love this. It's got a handle. It's so like, I want to take a nap on this bag because <laughs> how she does the interfacing and it's like quilt batting, I think. Now, go watch her podcast and she'll let you know in her just shop stuff. So yeah, bees and lavender and living in here is a yarn you've seen on this podcast since probably the first episode. That is my Wool the Andes Tweed in Lighthouse Heather, which is not black, nor is it gray. It's technically blue, but you can't tell because it always looks gray. This sweater has tried to be so many, this yarn has tried to be so many sweaters, it's not even funny. No joke. This is what Wool of the Andes looks like when you get it in the mail. This is what mine looks like right now, because this is probably three or four cakes, or like skein things. Yeah. I actually talked about this on the podcast back in the winter, because I started this sweater, and then ripped it out, and then started it again, like six months later. So this is the Scotch Mist Pullover by Thea Coleman. And it is beautiful. It's kind of hard to read these cables. Also, I'm holding it up and I can't really see what I'm looking at. There you go. But y'all, this is gonna be a great sweater. Uh, part of the reason I ripped it out in the beginning when I started it months ago was I didn't wanna do a sweater in the round like this, but I thought about it. It's like, yeah, it takes longer to get a round than it does on when they're pieced, but then when it's done, it's done. Like I don't have to, I'll have to seam the, the shoulders together to pick up the sleeves. But other than that, it's got a two by two split hem. I am doing the long version. Uh, it also has some waist shaping in it, which I am doing, I think I'm working on, that's the next thing I need to do. But because I'm short-waisted, I kind of went longer than where it was supposed to be because I need my waist in a different spot. Okay, that's all the sweaters. I almost hit the tripod with this bag. <laughs> Back. I have one more that's on the needles that I will talk about when I am further and we are closer to it's a test net so I will talk about that when we are closer to that okay so a uh, bag giveaway we're gonna leave that open for a little longer um, I'm say one more week that's on the sock episode I will um, comment on the winners post that's how you will know so check if you commented check Check your notifications next week to see if you got picked. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the episode before this. We're giving away two bags from Barley Pearls. Not Barley and Pearls, which I kept saying on the episode. It's Barley Pearls. Okay. So I said I was going to talk about books, I believe, on this one because we talked about life stuff before. And life stuff, real quick, abridged. Um, pedagogy class is almost done. Summer school starts on Monday, which essentially in my brain means that I'm done with summer break as of Sunday because I'll start doing um, beginning of the school year prep for all my classes. Yeah, we've been watching a lot of movies. We've kind of uh, laid back on Critical Role just for a little bit because we were getting real intense about it. Like 16 hours of Critical Role a weekend is kind of a lot. Plus then we were neglecting things. We finished The Boys. Obviously we finished Stranger Things. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, podcast. Let's talk about podcasts really quick before I get into books. We have a lot of books that I need to tell you about. Um, I have been binging um, Needles at the Ready with Kevin and Ray. I will tag that down below. They're delightful. I can't believe I haven't been watching them sooner. And they're, yeah, they're great. Um, that's pretty much all I've been <laughs> 
watching during the day uh, while I sit and knit. Um, I did say a thing in the last one. I've been watching a lot of Gold Rush on Discovery Channel. I have taken a break from that because I got sucked into podcasts. And yeah, there you go. Books. So, I think I talked about this in the last episode. I bought a Kindle during Amazon Prime Day. And I already own a Barnes & Noble Nook e-reader. So now I've been splitting my time between both of them. So I'm going to look at my Barnes & Noble list first. Because my shelves should have most of the books I have finished lately. Okay. So. Whoop. Nope. What did I just do? I don't know. Okay. So from Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Nope. Now I'm downloading <laughs> So I have finished this summer The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which is what the Netflix series is based off of. Um, really good. Uh, definitely of its time. Um, I believe it's set in like the early 1900s. I'm going to sound so dumb. I'm sorry. Um, I believe it's set in the early 1900s, but it was written in the 70s. But uh, pretty good. Definitely more low key than the show was. Uh, but yeah, still really good. I'm glad I read that because that's kind of like a horror staple. I read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I have a couple more of his as well. He also wrote Final Girls Support Club, Support Group. Hold on. Final Girls, Final Girls. The Final Girls Support Group, which I'm into a little bit, but not a ton yet. He also wrote the Southern Book Club's Guide to Vampire Slaying which I believe most people have heard of. Was it maybe in the Reese's Book Club? I don't know. But yeah, the Southern Book Club Guide to Vampire Slaying. It's also by Grady Hendrix. Okay, back on track for this. Then I finished um, several Sherry LaPena books. I finished An Unwanted Guest. I finished A Stranger in the House. And I finished Someone We Know. And I think that's all I have from her right now. I read her books... And sometimes I'm a little underwhelmed by the endings, not the twists. The twists are good. It's just how they wrap up is sometimes a little underwhelming for me. But then like three weeks later, I want to read another one. And she, I think she has like four more that I haven't read. So I have that. Um, I read House Cross the Lake by Riley Sager. Like the minute it came out, it was so good. I love everything Riley Sager has written in the episode I recorded back in June. I spoke of the fact that I read his entire bibliography in like three weeks. And yeah, House Cross Lake was amazing. Um, I read, so I love Sophie Kinsella books. They are, she wrote the Shopaholic series, or Confessions of a Shopaholic is the first book and it's just the Shopaholic series. I'm on Shopaholic Goes to Hollywood. I'm on book like seven of that series. I haven't read it in a while, but I have a lot of them. So I read uh, Remember Me, which is actually one of her first books. It was very good. I like that kind of early 2000s. You have to be careful though. Some early 2000s chiclet or like, you know, what did I hear? Chick fic. That's another term I've heard. They get a little problematic because it was the early 2000s. And sometimes I read them back. Like I read them in like middle school or high school. And then I read them back and I'm like, ooh, this is kind of gross. I don't think I like this. Uh, she's not one of those. They still hold up. Plus they're set in the UK, so they're just good in general. Um, then I read Hidden Pictures by Jason Rakulak. It was good. I don't know, I felt a little conflicted on it. It was, it was pretty good. And then I finished All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. That was my first Megan Miranda. Uh, I love, I loved it. It was so good. It took a minute to like get there, but like once it did, it was good. Like the slow burn of it was good. So that's everything on my Kindle, and that, or my, not my Kindle, on my Nook. And then, let's see. I do have Goodreads. Um, I only really use it because it's tied to my Kindle. I don't know what my own, like, username for it is, I guess. But, um, so far in tw the 2022 Reading Challenge, I have finished uh, The It Girl by Ruth Ware, which is her new one that came out this last month. I finished Blackout, which was is called Blackout, a Thriller, by Erin Flanagan. And then last night I finished Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. Whoa, that one was crazy. I loved it. So that's what I am. I have finished. And I'm one of those people that reads a thousand books at once. So right now I am reading. 
Let's go to my library. I am actively reading The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James, which I did not I did not love Book of Cold Cases, which was the first one of hers I read. It was predictable and it was a little boring, I guess, but um, the Sundown Motel was amazing. So definitely check that out. And The Haunting of Maddie Claire is very interesting because it's a period piece, like Victor not Victorian, a little late. No, World War One, like England or UK or Europe. It's, it's UK. And they are like, she's like a ghost hunter kind of thing. It's very interesting so far. And then I'm reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which I'm very much enjoying. What else am I actively reading? Bum, bum, bum. I'm kind of I'm slowly rereading Fellowship of the Ring. That's on my all my Kindle stuff. And then on my Nook, I am currently working on My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing, who came recommended to me from the Instagram account Murder by the Book, uh, which is a bookstore in Texas that specializes in like mysteries and thrillers and stuff like that. Um, I'm reading I just started The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. That's spelled F N I F I N L A Y Finley. Um, I'm reading The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. I am reading Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering. And that's kind of it right now. I read things based on my mood and what I need to read before bed and not read before bed. And I need to stop reading thrillers before bed because it is messing with my sleep. My dreams more than anything. Anyway. Do you love my new iPad case? Because I love my new iPad case. Uh, I have more stickers to put on here. Yeah. Okay, so that was sweaters. Hopefully by the next time I do a sweater podcast, I'll have a couple couple finished ones for you. So look for that one probably the last week of August, right before school starts. And yeah, so thanks for coming to check out the sweater episode. Uh, sock episode will be coming hopefully in the second week of August. You might need to give me some wiggle room on that because that will also be during... Summer school. Summer school is done by noon though, so it should be fine. My birthday is coming up. I'll be starting my birthday sale um, next week, Wednesday. That'll run for two weeks. Uh, so check my Instagram for that. And yeah, I feel like I'm way too low in the frame. Whatever, I'm not recording. <laughs> I'm recording it now. <coughs> I just want to make sure there's enough room to show sweaters. Okay, I will see you guys in my next sock episode. Hope you're having a good summer and I will see you soon.